A very warm welcome back. It is snooker podcast time and uh, we are here guiding you through what is the quite mammoth UK Championship uh, first round. Uh, it's myself and Ian McCulloch. Of course, we've had uh, plenty of snooker with the Northern Ireland Open, but the UK is uh, one of the premier tournaments and we have 128 participants that will be whittled down uh, to the final pairing and we'll have a new UK champion in a couple of weeks time. Uh, the first round for the first time in uh, a long time is going to be televised on uh, some uh, uh, sports network so you'll be able to see some of the uh, the games. Uh, Ian obviously with 128 starting off in the uh, first round there's, there's going to be mismatches there's going to be matches that are very one-sided because it is a seeded tournament but surely and I'm, I'm hoping that you've done you've <laughs> done a fair bit of homework and you've found us a bit of value yeah th th this is as you, as you said now this this event is is seeded so you've got the world number one Judd Trump playing the world number 128 the world number two playing the world number uh 127. You've got the world number 64 playing the world number 65. So that's where it starts getting interesting. And one of my selections come into that as well. Um, it's, it's obviously the, the, the TV games uh, are, are predominantly going to be taken up by, especially over the next four days of the first round, are predominantly going to be taken up by the top 16 players, your Trump, your O'Sullivan, your Robertson, your Murphys, your Karen Wilson, up to number four now, Karen Wilson, by the way, it's a fantastic achievement. So, yeah, so you, you're going to get a lot of one-sided games on that TV table. Uh, it starts on Monday, so that table will, re, will be recovered after the uh, Northern Ireland Open final. So it'll be playing super slick, uh, best of 11s, which obviously slightly longer than what the, the Northern Ireland trophy has been. They've been best of of sevens up to, to the uh, the quarterfinals onwards. So it favours the better player. And hence, you very, very rarely get a random winner of the UK Championships. In terms of the matches, I'm looking down the list and, and the betting with some of them. I mean, uh, for uh, I'm just picking a match out at random here, but Mark Williams is 1-12 to 12 to beat Van Hancorn at 13-2. to two. You know, we are not going to be looking at those matches in this section. This is round one for us. We yeah, are going to be yeah, finding you. Yeah. We're going to be finding you. Hopefully, a lot better than one to twelve. Well, I'd like to think so. You know, it's it's very very tough to be honest. And and and, and to be fair, you know, skirting through the majority of the matches, a high percentage of the matches that are matches, and by that I, I don't mean you know all, all due respect to the lad who's you know the lads at the bottom end are going to be on that TV table against your Judd Trumps and they're all Sullivans, and it happens every year. And they're getting absolutely trounced. So I'm not. I'm not putting prices. Like I'm not putting one to twenty fives up. I believe Ding's one to two hundred. Uh, somebody told me today, uh, and I'm definitely not a fan of backing two hundreds on shots uh, because that is the way to the poor house. Um, so I, I, I found three. Um, they're not pylons by any means, but I think that they are wrong, and and hopefully I'll try and justify why they're wrong as well. Well, let's start with your first selection then, and first match. Yeah, I'm going with um, the podcast regular and favourite, Martin O'Donnell. Um, it's another classic case of, of the bookies don't think he can play. Um, he's up against Jamie Clark uh, and those, if you go back to the World Championships, uh, Jamie Clark did phenomenally well beating Mark Allen in the first. He did phenomenally well qualifying and then he beat Mark Allen in the first round. And then he got sucked into that silliness with, with Anthony McGill when he was well in front. I think he was 8-2 in front and somewhat collapsed to lose 13-12, I think it was. Um, Martin is currently, after the, uh, obviously the rankings aren't out after the, the Northern Ireland uh, trophy, um, but on the, on the World Snooker website, the current ranking is Martin O'Donnell at 38, Jamie Clark at 93. So there's a bit of a gulf, and yet Martin O'Donnell is 4-5 to five to win that match. Uh, it's a classic case of the bookies don't think he can play once again. All right, he's had a couple of lean tournaments. He lost out in uh, in the Northern Ireland Trophy to, I think it was Lee Hanger, Looning, one of the two, 4-1. Looning played pretty well, and he lost out in the German qualifying. After after beating Kurt Mafflin for the second time this season, uh, he lost out to Robbie Williams 5-4 on the black, uh, where he actually played very well, and Robbie Williams played very well. So he is in good form. 
to be fair, and I'll take that. And Jamie Clark, since the Championship League, which was the first tour, the first lot of Championship League this year, has been very, very flat for them to me, since then for me. Sorry, put my teeth in. And possibly his bubbles burst a little bit. You know, he's obviously still a very, very good player. But if the world number 38 is playing the world number 93, whatever it is, and I'm getting four to five on the world number 38, I'm taking the world number 38 at that price. You know, Martin's dropped back a little bit because he's defending money. He's, he's, he's only, um, he, he lost his opening round in the Northern Ireland Open, so he's going to drop back again a little bit. But that's the way the rankings go. You know, he's, he's, he's been as high as 30, and he's a quality performer. And, 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 and as you want from all your snooker vets, you want to try it. And he doesn't give up. He graphs all day long, and that's that's why, you know, he, he, he's come up with some big prices for us in the last 12, 18 months. Martin O'Donnell then is the first selection in round one. Let's move on to uh, the second pick then. Yeah, my second selection uh, is Daniel Wells at four to six to beat Gerard Green. A uh, bit of a stalwart Gerard Green, one of my one of the few remaining players from my generation on the tour. Jerry Green, great, great long potter in his day. Um, you know, he dropped off the tour. He's got back on, but Jerry's nowhere near the player that he was. You know, he was top thirty-two in his in his pomp in the early two thousand, late late nineteen nineties. Great player. Um, a little bit suspect on the temperament was Jerry at the best of times. And now he's got older. Uh, that's still the same. Um, he's playing Daniel Wells. Uh, and they've, they've put Daniel Wells' favourite because obviously Daniel Wells is in the top 64. Um, but Daniel Wells hasn't won a match so far this season. But he's only played two, three matches, something like that, because he was the first player to get kicked, kicked out of a tournament for covid and he missed the first two tournaments because of the COVID thing. Um, so he's lost his last three first round matches. He, he, he lost a bad one to uh, Jamie O'Neill. Well, what looked like a bad result against Jamie O'Neill in the German qualifiers, he was 3-1 up and lost 5-3. But Jamie O'Neill finished off really strongly in that match and then had a fantastic win to qualify for Germany. So it's not that bad a result. I think on a level playing field, I think Daniel Wells should probably be more like 4-9. to nine. I know he's working hard and, you know, eventually he's going to turn a corner and four to six for me is a little bit on the big side. It's not a pile on, but I think it's a little bit on the big side. As you know, as I'm not a fan of time, uh, uh, tipping up odds on, but I'm trying to justify uh, all, all these odds on shots. And, and I think, I think they are wrong. So we've got Martin O'Donnell four to five, got Daniel Wells at four to six. Uh, what's the third pick in round one? The last one, and again, I'm, I'm simply doing it because I think the price is wrong, is uh, uh, David Grace at 7-10 to 10 to beat to beat Ian Burns. Um, Gracie has turned a corner massively um, since dropping off the tour a couple of years ago and getting back on. He's lost a lot of weight. He's lost five or six stone in weight. And in the last two or three tournaments, he's started getting some good results. And that, that's been uh, strengthened by his run to the semi-finals in, in, in the Northern Ireland Open this week, losing to Judd Trump in the, in the semi-finals. Had some very good wins, played very, very impressively uh, against um, Yan Bing Tao in the quarter-finals of that match. He was 2-1 down in that match. And after the interval, he was 50 behind, cleared up with 70, made another break the next, and then finished off the match with 100. And one of the signs that, that well, a few of the signs that people are playing well and are confident is A, they are scoring, and B, the closing matches out, no problem. Uh, and that's why I think Grace is the wrong price. He's playing Ian Burns, who's not really setting the world on fire at the moment. He's only won a handful of games this year. He was 4-2 down to Jimmy White in one of those games uh, that he won. Uh, he isn't scoring as heavily as what he was a few years ago. And, and again, if, if, you know, if, if I'm honest, I think Grace should probably maybe more like something like 4-7, to seven. Um, maybe even one to two to win this match. It'll be close because they're very, very evenly matched players. But I just think Grace, he's got a little bit more confidence in it at, at the moment. So I think he's playing a little bit better. So I think that seven to 10 is a little bit of value. Well, there you go. Seven to 10 on uh, David Grace against Ian Burns. We've got Martin O'Donnell at uh, around four to five and uh, Daniel Wells uh, on the board around the four to six mark. Uh, no doubting that the selections, if you want to, you could quite easily uh, pop a treble on, uh, nothing stopping you doing that. 
one final question before we go, Big Mac, in terms of for the big players, for those top 16 players, in, in terms of the UK, this, this sort of early stage, the first and second round, it really is a case of just getting those matches won, isn't it? And getting to the, to the nitty gritty stage and yeah, how absolutely. you play. No, I mean, the seeding will help them, as you'll see from one or two of the TV games. There will be some severe mismatches. Uh, but I, I have no doubt we'll, we'll probably see a tens on shot get beat uh, because it happens every year. Uh, you've just got to make sure that you aren't that tens on shot when, as, as a player. Um, you know, it's, it can be a little bit of a, a skating rink and you're up against it a little bit, especially if the lad down the bottom end plays a little bit above himself and you're having a bit of an off day. But the best of 11s, uh, you know, gives them that little bit more breathing space. You know, you're not panicking as much if it's 2-2 at the interval or even 3-1 down. It, you know, you see it every now and then. Uh, and, and, and I would imagine a high percentage of the top 16, I would expect to get through uh, looking at the draws. Uh, I, I couldn't see any more than maybe one, two casualties, Max. And just a final point, this tournament... Renowned for the venues that it's played in, Guildhall, of course, we remember many years ago. Uh, York, yeah. most recently. Yeah. Now, now they're playing in Milton Keynes in this sort of bubble. How much of an effect will that be? Because the players now that have played at Milton Keynes in the Championship League and all the various tournaments, Mac, uh, they're going to be used to that particular arena. But it's very well, different from a guild hall or a Barbican or wherever else we've we've been in, in the past, isn't it? Yeah. Well that, that absolutely does. I mean speaking from from obviously my, my personal preference was was the guild hall. It's, it's a stone's throw from where I live. And, and and I love playing there. You know the crowds were always good at the guild hall as, as they are at York. And I think we saw at the start of of, of lockdown when crowds weren't allowed in, it affected some players uh, uh, negatively and it affected, it helped some players positively. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty convinced uh, that there's certain players who've been very, very flat and only been good in patches. Uh, Sean Murphy's one, Neil Robertson's another, the big crowd, the big occasion players. Uh, Trump's got used to it now. He was a bit flaky at the start, and even though he was winning uh, and, he's, and he's fully settled in now. And at the same time, you had players who've done well who for me, aren't necessarily big occasion players. They've won some big games against top-end players, especially at the Crucible. You know, I know what the Crucible's like when you walk out there now and you're at the top of them steps. You never look down at the tables. All you can see is, is a sea of faces. Now, when you're walking out there and there's nobody there, it does take the pressure off. Uh, it's because the, the Crucible, but, but all, all venues when they're full are cooking pots, you know, and, and it's, it's stand up and be counting. Now, if there's no crowd in, it's got to help the lower ranked players, you know. Um, obviously, for the lads who were habitual back table players, felt a little bit sorry for David Grace this week in, in the Northern Ireland Open. He's grafted all week on the on the back tables. Had some fantastic results. As I said, he beat Yan Beng Tao in the quarterfinals. I think it was the last 16, he was 3-0 down to Michael Holt and came back really strongly to win 4-3. So it shows that they're all capable and they can all play, but the real stand-up test is when you've got them cameras moving around and you're on the TV table, and that's where a lot of them fall short. Uh, and obviously, if there's no crowd in and you are out there, it does give you a bit of help. Um, but it, it'll be an interesting week because oh, the UK is a great tournament to play in. Sadly, I never did that well in it. I think I had, I think I had one last 16 in it in 20 years. I don't know why. It just, just it was just never my tournament. But, you know, it, 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 I liked it better personally when it was the best of 17s. Obviously, it's best of 11s now. But they take 128 to the venue where they only used to take uh, 64 or 32 to the venue. Uh, so, no, it, it, the UK is a great tournament now. You know, and it's just a shame that there isn't going to be crowds in. But I say, I think players have got used to that now. Um, and players like Robertson, who, who definitely struggled at the start, are starting to get used to it and are starting to produce. Well, fingers crossed uh, at some point soon we will get the uh, the fans back in. Uh, a reminder of Ian's first round picks at the end of the video. We always say this, please do gamble responsibly. And myself and Ian will be back. Of course, remember, small stakes plays as well. Uh, myself and Ian will be back for a look ahead to round two at the UK Championship.